Hey everybody, how's it going? I thought I'd kill two birds with one stone with this video. I am testing the webcam on this framework laptop, and yes, that is a drawing that I did when I was in kindergarten. That is my artwork, and as you might be able to tell from reading my handwriting, uh, it really hasn't gotten better since. So I am testing this framework laptop webcam and microphone. We'll see how good it is. And I just wanted to say thank you very much to all of you. I've hired one lobbyist in one state from the 501c4 for right to repair lobbying. And I have four lobbyist proposals for four other states in my inbox that I am going through at the moment for the 501c4. And this is work that I would never be able to get started doing without all of you. There is also some educational work that we'd like to do out of the 501c3 using funds that were donated by a very generous donor to try and get more groups active and educated on what right to repair is. So something many of you have said is, why don't you reach out to environmental groups, to uh, I don't know, the recycling groups, green energy people, all those people, and get more of them on board? Well, they have to know what right to repair is, know why it's important, know that it's an issue. So we'd like to, we did a poll in a focus group in Massachusetts a few months ago where we found out that most ordinary average people, even people that are into recycling and reuse and uh, green stuff, have really have no idea about this as an issue. So we're working on that as well. And this is really something that would not be possible without all of you. And I just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for making this possible because we are at a point where we're going to be able to have a lobbyist in every state where right to repair is a serious issue. And instead of showing up at the end and just talking for a little bit with a politician on the day of a hearing, we're going to have a lot of work done before the session even starts to get as many groups on board as humanly possible and to understand what's happening in the legislature. We're going to understand that from the beginning rather than showing up at the end. And that's something that we could have never afforded to do without the help ball of you. So as I work on these four proposals, and there's actually a fifth one that uh, one of them we've already done, I'm, I just want you all to know just how, how grateful I am for the fact that I am able to do this work that I otherwise would never have had the financial means uh, to do. Somebody had said even just um, one or two years ago that I would have over $800,000 available to hire lobbyists in every single state and get people on the same page and get politicians working on things. I would have thought you were all full of it. And if somebody said that I would be holding in my hand a laptop from a company that actually respects and believes in right to repair, that makes schematics available to repair shops, that wants their products to be fixable, that puts QR codes with manuals on the parts of the device to make it easy for you to be able to fix them and get access to guides on how to fix it, that sells the replacement parts to you, I would have thought that you know, we were, we were talking about bizarro world. So uh, there is hope. There really is hope that we are not going to live in a future where, quote, you own nothing and you are happy. You might just live in a world where Mr. Clinton owns things. Is very happy. Mr. Clinton. Let's see if Mr. Clinton thinks this framework laptop here. Mr. Why are you sniffing it? Does it pass the sniff test, Mr. Clinton? Clinton. You realize that's my seat, right? I expect to be able to sit back down over here. All right. Yeah, he's not letting me have my 